Good morning. This is the Yeshiva Orta meeting. We're learning the Mimer Bati Lagani. We're in the middle of the third chapter. This is the, the ninth class. If I'm not mistaken, the ninth class. Tenth. This is the tenth class. All right, so we learned uh, in previous that <coughs> every man is a holy temple, especially the Jewish people, and that just like the holy temple had a revelation of God, as <laughs> we also, our job is to reveal God in the world. And the same way as it was done in the temple by means of work that they had to make sacrifices and there was fire, and they had to bring animals, they had to change the animals from being animals to being uh, mitzvahs, Godly, and the same also is with us. <coughs> and we all have a thing. We all have a um, fire, which is meditation. We have to we contemplation. We have to contemplate God until we get excited. <coughs> and we have the animal, the animal soul. And we have godly soul. That's the fire that comes from above. <coughs> it says the Rebbe, there's one thing that's missing to put the whole thing together, and that is you got to be a little bit crazy can't be normal. And that's what the, 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 the tabernacle was made from this wood that was called shittim wood. And the word shittim comes from the word shtut, or like a shoteh, which means to be a little bit crazy, as we put it. But there's different types of crazy. There is normal crazy, which normal crazy means you <coughs> whatever feels good, or you uh, act only according to your own ideas and uh, imaginations, or how do you say, uh, illusions, or there's another type of crazy, which is you go according to God's ideas. <coughs> you, both of them sort of ignore the world. They sort of ignore normal. So here, of course, you have to re remember that the, the Rebbe is writing this mimer for religious Jews. In other words, Jews that believe in God to some degree, and they do the commandments. So a Jew that just does the commandments in a normal, logical way, that's called, the, how do you say, the straight path. Since the Rebbe, that's not the way to make yourself into a holy temple. If you go too straight, you don't become, uh, <coughs> you don't make yourself into a holy temple. Why not? Because if you go straight, so it means you're not following the path of least, least resistance. It means you, I'm sorry, that you are following the path of least resistance. In other words, your only desire is to be straight. So if, let's say, you're going straight and the whole world pulls you over here, so you go with the whole world because everything is like relative to where you are. So you look around you and you judge what is straight by what the world does. So that you think you're going straight, you're just going straight because the whole world, everything is going this way. Now, it's, but in the big picture, you're not. A, a straight person is called... Avram Avinu, for instance, Abraham. Abraham was going straight. He did what was true all the time. He did what was right all the time. But it means that he had to go against the world. He had to not do according to the norm. That was one reason he was called the Avram Ha'ivri. He didn't, he was called, Ivri means on the other side. The whole entire world was going left or was going right or was going up and down. And he just kept going straight and did what was straight for Hashem. But the whole world, if you went, he was, he was going wrong, right? He was messed up, Avram Avinu. He was crazy. That's the inheritance that Abraham gave to us. Right? That he was gave to us to be uh, crazy like, like him. So that's what we're talking about now. How to be <coughs> crazy, but in on God's terms. Not on your terms. <coughs> so he said, a normal crazy person, what does he do? He goes after his own imagination. He doesn't care about what the world thinks about him. He goes according to his own thoughts and his own standards. He doesn't care what the world thinks. <coughs> a, um, let, let, let's take a, maybe another example. We have all the way there was like the, the professors, mad, for, what do they, the, 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 the professors that they only care about their, their uh, theories or their, their fields. So the guy walks around in a daze because he's thinking mathematics or he's thinking ideas or, you know, the, Edison, when he was trying to invent the first light bulb, he couldn't care about anything. He could walk outside in his pajamas because he was thinking about, right, about making the first light bulb. 
How was it going to work? You didn't care about what the world thought. The world didn't care about light bulbs. The world was walking around in darkness, and he was interested only in truth. Good. That's even the world will agree. Those that's the those these people, these people are like heroes. That he had this idea. He knew it could be done, and he went against any everybody. The people who go against the communist governments and the people who the, the revolution in America. How they went against the English. They were outnumbered, and they didn't care what what the rest of the world said. And everybody told them it couldn't be done. And he did it. And that's like above normal in the world terms. But now we're talking about being above normal in God's terms, in Hashem's terms. And that not too many people are willing to do. And that's the idea of Avram. First of all, he had to be sure that what he was doing was right. And then after that, he did it. So this, now the Rebbe is saying, now it's easier to be sure that you're right. We have Hasidus. Hasidus comes and teaches us what? God is and what you're supposed to do. Okay, Kobe? What Hasidus is and what God is, what he wants us to do. The problem is, do we really do it? Do we really do it? According to Hasidus, and Hasidus just explains what it says in the Torah, you have to love God with all of your heart, with all of your might, with all of your being, with all of your soul. You're supposed to love God. Are there any people that really love God? What does it mean, love? Love means Think about God, it makes you excited. Right? It makes you excited. It's a thing that makes you excited. If somebody said, hey, I've got a nice present for you, right? You know what? You just got a package. You got a nice present. And you have to sign, uh, sign over here. What is it? Well, you, you, let's see. You have to pay uh, $10,000 in taxes. Oh, look, it's been pay, paid for you. It's all yours. What is it? You're all excited. Ooh, wow. What is this? What is that? Right? You say, somebody says, you know, uh, someone just broke into your room, and I think they're stealing. What? You're all excited, right? You're all excited. You, you don't want this. You want this good thing. You don't want this bad thing. That's how you're supposed to be excited about God. Okay? Uh, is there anybody that's that excited about God? You got to be nuts in order to be excited about God. What's there to be excited about God? Right? To be crazy. So that's what the Rebbe says. That's what you have to do. And that's the type of craziness he's talking about. That's the type of craziness that's being demanded of us. The thing that requires a lot of work. But you have a godly soul that will help you. That will lift up the sacrifice. It's karev. To become close. <coughs> Excuse me. To be close to this. So it says, what is it that prevents us from understanding the truth? What is it that prevents us from having love of God? Because if you think about it for one second. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you think about it, this one second, what God is creating us. God is not just some sort of a big angel in the heavens. God is creating us. He's creating the whole world. He took us out of Egypt. All the things that we're, we talk about when we daven should make you excited. Should make you excited about Hashem. But it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Because it says, let's take it, the first word in line is hahergish. Hahergish. Perish. What does it mean? See what it is? Hahergish. First word in line. It's, it's almost at the middle of the page. Perish. The attachment. And the heat. In and yanechemda. In matters of <coughs> lust, the desire, the retika that you're all boiling for the world, the makarer, huh? Retika in boiling, yeah. Retika means boiling, right? You're really hot, thing of the world. The makarer, this cools off. Hahergish, the feeling, their their hair, the feel, the how do you say the <laughs> the certainty, their hair is like the certainty, the feeling, the feeling, the inyanim is in spiritual things. <clears throat> right? If you're worried, if what really jumps you is like what people think about you, or if I'm going to make money, or if I'm going to get a nice, my bed is going to be warm today, or if my money is in the bank, if that thing's really, really on your mind, it's not bad to have People laugh at you. It's not bad. It's not bad to have a nice bed. It's not bad to have, to be, we have to worry about what people think about you. You should dress nicely. Right? You can't go, you can't you just be, insult people. Good. You should worry. But if that's really where the essence of your soul is, right, then you're not going to know about God. Really. I think I told you this story before. I had a cousin. <coughs> this, he was a happy-go-lucky guy. He could care nothing about anything. He was an art teacher with long hair. Right? Man. Lived the, 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 how do you say, the life of, what they call it, the life of Riley, they call it. 
Ah, an easygoing life. Had himself a nice Corvette, right? Drove around, enjoyed life. Could care about nothing, right? I didn't care about money, not it. Until some woke up one morning and somebody stole his Corvette. Woke up one morning, revealed somebody who stole his Corvette. <coughs> it affected him so deeply. He had insurance on it and everything, as far as I know. He had insurance and everything. It affected him so deeply. Somebody stole his Corvette. He had failed to, but he had been raped. He took it and invaded his thing. He was in, he thought he was just happy, but he cared about it. All of a sudden, somebody disturbed his world, his world, he moved his bed from the back of the house, his bedroom, from the back of the house to the front of the house. He put all sorts of uh, alarms on it. He got a new car, alarms on it, bought himself a shotgun. Kind of guy got himself a shotgun. Got a license and everything. License and everything. And he added to his, to his window, if anybody would mess with his car, it would see it go on, he would, he was ready. If he was going to shoot, shoot. Maybe he would shoot up in the air first, maybe he would do whatever he would do. But he became obsessed with this thing. Right, this thing. Somebody had invaded him, somebody had done something to him, right? he was going to uh, you know, protect himself. Protect himself. You, uh, uh, you could see that it was at the essence of his soul. Somehow or other it was at the essence of his soul that somebody messed with his world. Yeah, messed with his world. He says, right, I mean, it's a bad thing to have something stolen from you. But if that's the type of thing that's really at the essence of what your soul is, then you're never going to be able to love God. But the essence of your soul is the world, right? What are you really looking forward to? What do you really want? Is it like it's, you know, there's, there's, there's the story of Aesop's fables or whatever. The guy had a, got three wishes. You know, the story about the guy got three wishes. And one of the wishes is that <coughs> what that is, uh, his wife should have a nose like a sausage or something. Some crazy, you know, some crazy thing. Because his, where was he at? You know, where was his life at? What, what was he thinking? He's saying, yeah, what does he care? You know, a little feeling over here, a little idea over there. And then the third wish was that he had the wish that his wife would go back to not being a sausage. You know, right? Right? In other words, he got mad at his wife and he said, you're in the wrong she, she disturbed him or something like that. And that's where people are. You know, that's where people are. People are the nicest guys in the world until something disturbs them. Right? They say the story that there was... Uh, the, uh, they say the story about Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz. That's what I heard about him. That there was a big bishop that was an advisor to the king. And that the bishop hated the Jews. That he wouldn't listen. That he wouldn't listen to him. Because he loved the Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz. And he used to give him good advice. For <coughs> and this bishop always tried to find ways to make the king happy. To do something to ingratiate himself into the king. That the king would like him. Finally... The, uh, the bishop figured out that the king loves cats. He loves cats. He loved to have cats around. Right? The king was nuts. The king loved cats. So he loved to have cats around. So what did the king do? What did he do? He figured out. So what did the, he gathered a thousand cats together. The, the, uh, the, the bishop gathered together a thousand cats. And he tr started to train them. Train them. Of course, cats can't be trained. Really, you know, it's whatever they want. Because cats do whatever they want to. But he found from the thousand cats, there were a hundred cats that responded well to his training. And then he trained from those, he found ten that really responded well. And then after he finally found one cat that he could really train, that he could put it and clothes on it, and hold a little tray, and would come to the king and serve the king a cup of brandy. Some brandy. He worked on it and worked on it and worked on it for months, for months, for years. Uh, huh? I understand it's supposed to be a true story. That he went, that he, he served the, uh, the cat stood up on his hind leg and he had a little tray. He put on his shoulder or whatever it was, or it was attached over here, and had a little brandy. And he went to the king and he gave the king. Right, he knew that the king would go berserk over this. The king was crazy. He would see a thing like this. He realized a man trained a cat to be the king's servant. This is amazing, right? The king, now the king just lives with everything. He should be a servant. So he did it. He saw the, the cat walking in. The king, oh, he saw the king's eyes got big like this. And the king saw the cat walking in. And the owner said, Rebus didn't know what to do. He had a little uh, pouch that he would sometimes take a little bit of snuff. And he would sm smell the stuff sometimes that would help him, you know, take his mind off of bad things or changes. His he took the, opened up the pouch, took a little stuff, and there was a mouse inside of the pouch. How a mouse got inside it was incredible. And the mouse jumped out. It's a miracle. The mouse jumped out of the pouch and ran across the thing. The cat saw the mouse. <laughs> threw the whole thing away and ran after the mouse. Right. What, what does it mean? It means that deep, deep down
found inside of that cat, you could train the cat as much as you wanted to, the cat was still an animal. So it's still an animal. And as the mouse, that turned them on, right? That turned them on. The same thing with people, right? The nicest guy in the world. All, all of a sudden, something gets them angry. All of a sudden, something has big desires. Uh, like Clinton in the White House, right? All of a sudden, the guy can't control it. All of a sudden, right? there it is. <laughs> if a person, if that's the essence of where you're at, you're never going to get excited about God. You could be a big rabbi with a big beard. Makes no difference. If that's really what turns you on, the inside, that's the little mouse, right? It really does it to you, then you're never going to really get it. This thing scares you, this thing you love, this thing you hate, this thing makes you depressed, this thing makes you I mean, it could be one thing, it could be ten things, it could be everything, it could be the whole world. But as long as the world really gets you really interested, that you love the world with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your might, just one thing, and you might not even know what it is. You might not even know what it is until it happens, right? Until they sold us that Corvette, he didn't know how much he loved it. But if there's something way down deep inside of your soul, then you're not going to really love it. How can you do it? What's, what's the solution? How can you, how can you get out of it? And that's why we have Hasidic. That's why the Rebbe's have the Hasidic book. Right? That's why the Rebbe's have On one end, you can go, they have the, these methods like the, the, the Far East. They say just meditate and just forget the world, forget your parents, forget everything like that. And so what, those people, they don't really change themselves. They, don't really, they just substitute one love, right? The, the one benefit for, for themselves. Well, oh, they're going to go to heaven, they're going to get nirvana. Here the Rebbe is saying that there is a way to really love Hashem. Not for what you're going to get. Not that you're loving yourself. But you can really love Hashem. How? A person has to think. A person has to, you have to really use your mind to think. There's these books I'm reading about uh, Victor Frankl. Victor Frankl, a very amazing person. And he was in the concentration camp. And before he went in the concentration camp, he had this idea. It was a well, well, well worked out idea that the essence of man was meaning. It was meaning. Uh, Sigmund Freud thought the essence of man was pleasure. And there was a guy called Alfred Adler. He thought the essence of man was his social standards, what people think about him, or what he says in the society. And Frankl said those things are true, but that's not the essence of man. The essence of man is meaning, and that you can find real meaning in any situation, even in the concentration camp, the worst place with dead bodies all over the place, and it was cold, and you were hungry, and there was no future, and there was no room, and there was no, you didn't have your own bed, and you didn't have your own anywhere. You had a little plank on the ground. <coughs> Meaning based on that every situation, no matter where you are, if you're alive, there must be meaning. If they're alive, and even if you don't know what the mean, what? Meaning that, that the, you are you're not alone. In other words, you are part of a bigger picture, and there's a reason that you're here, and the reason that you're and and a person can uh, the essence of being a human being is to decide to take every situation positively. Find something positive, right, no matter what it is. Find something to live for, find something to exist for, find some reason to be, right? Find some, some reason to be. You can find a good reason. You might not even know what the reason is. Just that you know that there is a reason, good enough. Like all the soldiers, you know, they go into battle. <coughs> they don't even know what their part is, but because they know they're fighting for the country, right, here he's fighting for, so you say, meaning. Meaning, the person knows that every second, if I'm alive, there must be a reason that I'm alive. There must be a reason that I'm alive. As soon as a person loses that, is it? here the Rebbe is telling you what the reason is. He doesn't give the reason. He's just saying the, the point is, is that if a person is attached down deep, he's attached to his money, then he can't exist in a concentration camp. My money is gone. I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing. Right? If a person is attached to his, to his pleasures, to his good looks, to his youth, to his health, to his, his politics, right? The concentration camp, they took all those things away. As long as you're attached to something in the world, then you're finished. So you're finished. He had to give up that and think to himself, listen, there must be some ultimate reason that I'm here, something ultimately good. What is it? I don't know, but I'll find it. I'll look for it. I have what to look for. I'll find it. Right? First of all, to forget about thinking about my attachment to the world. But not so because the world is good. To have food is good, of course. To have money, everybody wants to get out of the prison. Everybody wants to get out. But while we're here and we can't get out, right, let's think of something positive. Here the Rebbe is saying you can, you can get out. You can get out. That <coughs> you can make yourself into a holy temple. You can transform the whole world. But you have to be not attached so much to the world. And you have to be, yes, attached to the creator of the world. In other words, you use the world, but the world shouldn't use you. Not with anything to run away from the world. The world is bad. The world is not bad. The way you look at the world is bad. Look at the world differently. That's the Rebbe says. 
Now, what's the difference between the base of Migdash and any other building? A base of Migdash is a building like any other building. Depends how you looked at it. If you treated the base of Migdash holy, it was holy. If not, then God eventually destroyed it. Because people didn't treat it in a holy way. It says already the same thing with yourself. <coughs> if a person is so given over. So he is, is okay, again, here we go. And this, first word of the line is Chemda. Then this, the Karer cools off. Ahergish, this, that you're attached to the world, cools off. Ahergish, <coughs> your feeling. Dem der Her, you feel the certainty and the feeling, Nyani Ruchnim and spiritual things. Ah, er, he is, is, a Zoe feels so much. Eberge given, devoted. <coughs> in matters, you should have a pen or a pencil to write this down because these words you don't know. Give given, no pencil. <coughs> he is so given over in his desires, the Ratsonasov and his will, a homely physical, material, uh, mundane, which is Gashmi, a person is so given over to the world as that. The spiritual feeling is by him, is by him, the Tachli's ultimate, Helen the Hester, concealment in him. Good, we did this yesterday. Yes? Hainu, first word of line. Hainu, namely, Shinase, that a person becomes <coughs> bilti, not margish, feeling, kalal. That the person becomes completely how do you say anesthetized? Anesthetized. He becomes completely in uh, no feeling. He has no feeling at all of Hashem. The Ainu Margish, and he does not feel La Noam, the pleasantness. La Rivas and the sweetness. La Tov and the good. La Eloi and the highness. The Kiyoma Mitzvah in doing the commandments. doesn't feel how good it is to do a commandment. You Sometimes you go and do mitzvahim. It's a good reason to go and do mitzvahim. You fellas do mitzvahim on Fridays? You fellas go? I mean, no, yeah. Go and do mitzvahim on Fridays. You put, ask a person, you want to put on tefillin. And the guy says, yes, he does. And you see that he puts on tefillin, he's interested. Right? You start to think, hey, maybe there's really something in this tefillin. You see the guy stops in the middle of the street, whatever he's doing, and he, he's not religious. He doesn't put on tefillin. And suddenly you ask him, and suddenly he stops and he says, okay, and he puts on tefillin. There's no logical explanation for it. It doesn't make any sense. Right? Why would the guy do it? Some people, some people I've heard, they say, no, it's an, it's a, uh, you're putting on a, what is this, a, 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 a guilt trip. Making the guy feel guilty. What's he guilt trip for? What's he guilt about? He's walking. <coughs> huh? People sometimes will come up to you and they'll ask to put on tefillin, right? Because people are, because they realize that putting on a tefillin is a good thing, right? And they, they you, because that's what you want. You draw, a person draws what he wants. What a person thinks, that's what he wants. And, and nevertheless, despite what you want, despite all your negative thoughts, people still put on tefillin. People overcome your negativity, and they put on Isn't it true? Yes. People want to put on tefillin so much, they see it's a good thing, right? And they put on tefillin. When, when that happens, all of a sudden you... You think to yourself, wow, hey, maybe there's something in to this feeling. To this feeling right? I, even I, even I, right? I put on tefillin. I love putting on tefillin. I really do. So for, for me, it's a great thing. You're attached to Hashem. You're feeling you're doing what Hashem wants. It's a, a wonderful thing. It's like giving God a kiss, right? He gives you everything for free. Why not give him something for free? Give him a kiss. Nevertheless, when people come and they stop and they put on tefillin, you see a guy putting on tefillin, he puts on, yeah, it gives me a feeling, wow, you know, this is incredible. This is incredible. You, know, you can a Jew can really be a person can be in this world and do exactly what God wants in this physical world. It's like a holy temple. It's amazing, right? Every time it gives me a new, how do you say, interest, putting on tefillin and doing Torah mitzvahs, it, it renews your faith in the Jewish people. You realize that these people, God, these temples, God, it used to be. Now it's not so much anymore. There used to be a big fad in Israel, especially with the Russian kids. They used to dress as punk, punk uh, hairdos. They would, you know, shave their heads on the side, and they would have their a big like a mohawk in the middle or something crazy, and they would dye it like red and green and blue and purple, stuff like that. And they would have earrings and all these p 
piercings and tattoos all over. They're walking down the street with their girlfriend. And the girlfriend was just like him. She say, boy, right? A person looks at you and says, this guy is a, this guy took on the film. You, you can't believe it, right? Guy comes and he stabs me, puts on the film. You stop, boy, put on the film, the film. He looks at you to see, are you really serious? You want to know? Come, come put on the film. The film went already open. This guy is a, well, the guy, the guy in a million, his head was not there at all, right? The guy to put on, do all these piercings and do all this, it takes time. With pier- piercings, you got to walk along the street to dye your hair, right? He sunk in that stuff, he sunk in it. All of a sudden, you say, put the film, put the film, no problem. You say, sometimes you say, I don't know how to read. You say, you even sometimes, sometimes, what, what is this? You say, I saw you, are you Jewish? <coughs> put on the film, the guy puts on the villain. Right? Most incredible thing in the world. Says so what? That a person, the, what, but what? Except for that time, a person doesn't feel, doesn't feel the goodness, the sweetness, the tov, and the highness of doing the mitzvahs. The cane also, ain or margish, he does not feel if a person is attached to the world. He gets excited. The world lights up the essence of his soul. It says, ain or margish, he doesn't feel. Pachitsus, the loneliness. Varichuko in his farness, Nelukus from God. Shina said that is made Al Yadeh by means of Khait Vaavan, a sin and a transgression. He doesn't feel he's doing anything wrong. But there a claw general who it is, what is the Shtus, the Kedusha, Kisui, the covering? Hanefajabamis of the animal soul, Shemekhase that is covered. The godly soul. The animal soul covers over the godly soul. Or in simple language, my ego, my feeling that I exist, covers over the feeling that Hashem exists. What word? What? Covers. <coughs> Kisoy is a noun. Kisoy, it, it is the cover. Hamechaseh, that's the verb, that covers. A verb. He may behold the nefesh elokis, the godly soul. What is the godly soul? The godly soul who is elokus, godliness, the etzem muhuso, in its essential being. <coughs> Just like in the Beit Hamikdash, there was a revelation of God. God was in a building. Does that make any sense? Totally not. The same thing. Every Jew is a holy soul. God is revealed inside of your body. Over fraud, and especially the godly soul, and especially. Hanitzutz Shabo, the spark that is in it. <coughs> now the godly soul has ten spirals. The godly soul, just like the animal soul, has ten spirals. What is the animal soul? The animal soul is your personality, your talents, your abilities, your powers, your your soul, right? You have Chachma bin Adash. That's your power of awareness, awareness, and your power of thinking, right? A person has a power to be aware. You're aware of things. You can think. Of things, a person can be think. Or you can think of ideas. You can think deeply about ideas. Right? The source of your thought that's called bina, understanding. Then you have das. Das means to make something real. Right? Make something real. In other words, you realize that it's mine. Right? You realize what a, you can be a banker. You know what a million dollars is. You know what a million dollar investment is. You know what it means to, to, to buy stocks. What it means to buy bonds. You, to, you know all those things. You can understand how the market works. You can be a, an, an eco- economist. A great. Wonderful. Then they say, well, yeah, ten, what if a person has a $10 billion in the bank? Oh, $10 billion in the bank. What could you do with it? You could do this, you could do that. Well, the $10 billion is yours. Psh, mine. Wow, that's das. Das means reality. It's mine. That's the power of das. It's all intellectual. It's all in your mind. Then from that, you have emotions. Once you have das that attaches you to an idea, then you have emotions. You have love. Oh, money. Wow. You have fear. Oh, I hope they don't take it from me. Right? You have two fears. What am I going to do with the money? What should I do with it? The, the purpose, you have a purpose. <coughs> it says, but there's the essence. What's the that soul? The, the godly soul also has these ten spirals. The godly soul has ten spirals. The, the, what's chachma? Chachma is awareness, awareness of, of God. That's called faith. Faith, emuna. I believe that Hashem. You can't understand God. You can't understand. You can understand aspects of God. The essence of God you can get with chachma. That's called the essence of the Jewish soul. Essence of the Jewish soul. That's chachma. Power of chachma. Is this, that's called the nitzut shibol. 
This is called the spark, which is in the godly soul. There's a spark. This is the spark of Chachma, or to be more exact, the keter, the will of the will power to serve Hashem, or the pleasure in Hashem. Nevertheless, there's a spark inside of your godly soul that that's your connection to God. That's where you plug in to godliness. Who anitzut prati? This is the specific spark. Hashayich, which is re- which is relevant, el gufo prati to your body. In other words, mendi pairs godly soul is different from tuvia bolta godly soul is different from akiva tang's godly soul. It's a different godly soul. And so each and every person has a different, unique connection to God that nobody else has. That is your connection, your essence of your Jewish soul, called the, the essence of the spark, the chachma of the Jewish soul, the essence of your spark of the Jewish soul, how you connect to God in a different way from anybody else. That only you can do yourself, right? You can read Hasidus, you can go see by the holiest people by this, but in the end, you're on your own, like the Jewish people in the desert, when the Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't coming back. What did they do with their Jewish soul? What did they do? What did they connect to? Give me a golden calf. Hey, hey, hey. Right? Give me a golden calf. They freaked out. It was too much for them. Everybody has a godly soul, and the essence of the godly soul feels God. Sha'al yado, that by means of it, by means of the spark, the Jewish soul, by means of this place where you plugged in to the essence of God, sha'al yado, that by means of the spark, who he margish feels. Bechal in yani in Elohim, every godly soul. You light the spark. It's called lighting the spark. And I do you ask him, would you like to put on tefillin? All of a sudden, the guy thinks, tefillin, middle of the street, religious, what? He looks, okay, I'll do it. Right? What, what did, made him say yes, I'll do it? He had a feeling. All of a sudden, there's a feeling. God exists. It's not the same God that's written about in a book so that you write. It's, a, it's the essence of He suddenly feels that God is above all understanding. It's above all of his tricks and all of his pleasures and all the things that he did. He suddenly feels, whoa, God is is real. God is really creating every second is brand new. This second has nothing to do with the previous second, what I did. Every second is brand new. God is giving a gift every second. Suddenly he feels it. He wants to put on tefillin. Omar Gish Me'od. He feels, first of all, godliness, that he feels very much bedavar and a thing, shuhu, which is minegedelokus against godliness. <coughs> There's a story, a crazy story. It's told <coughs> in Divriya Yomim. That Ezra, or maybe it's in Ezra and Nehemiah, that, that uh, when the Jews came back from Babylon, so they came back, so the Jews that were in Israel, a lot of them that were in Israel, they figured God had just left them. They left, and they married non Jewish women. And Ezra came back, and these people had non Jewish wives and with families and everything. And Ezra came back and said, Guys, we're building the base of Migdash. You can't keep these non Jewish wives, you got to let them go. You know, give them some divorce bills, give them money, give them alimony, some big prizes, give them whatever you want to, but you got to divorce them. One day, everybody divorced their wives. You know what that means? <laughs> right? I mean, these, these are their wives. It's not like a cow or something. These are their wives. They liked them. They loved them. They were attached to them. All of a sudden, one day, what, what happened? Suddenly, they realized this is not what God wants. Right? This is not what God It's what I want. Right? If I, well, we got married to her. They have children. This is what I want. We get along together, but this is not what Hashem wants. So what, 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 what difference does it make to you? No, no, no. That's really important. It's really important. The same reason that I got married to this woman because I loved her and I liked her and, and she turned me on and there was, it was a, a good feeling. And this, all these things I get from God. Right? I, I, feel, I still like her. She's a nice lady. I'm repent. But, I, you know, I, I, we can't get married. It's like eating not kosher food. I might be very hungry. It's very good. You can serve it to a non-Jew. You can eat it. Right? So I, I know how to make it. I'm a chef. I know this. I can't do it. God doesn't want me to do it. I can't do it. Right? So I, no way. Like if you're sitting on a plane, I think most people in this room were the same way. You're sitting on a plane and they offer you, you know, not kosher food. You're really hungry. You missed two planes before. The, the, you've, ate, you've been going already for 24 hours. You haven't eaten anything. Nothing at all. And they offer you a not kosher food. I can't take it. I can't take it. Why not, sir? It's a, uh, right? beef. So you Jewish people believe beef. No. Sorry, only kosher. <laughs> okay, maybe you got a banana. Maybe you got a <coughs> huh? No, God forbid, you wouldn't do it. I do. I and <coughs> oh, why you don't want it? Yeah, 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 right. No, you say no. Once I remember, I was on a plane, and I said, um, 
And they said, would you like the, the food? I said, no, I, I'd only like if you have the veg vegetarian because I'm a religious Jew and I can't. There was an Arab lady that was sitting across the aisle from the other side. She said, I also, I only want the halal. I don't, all of a sudden, it woke her up, you understand? She said, yeah. She saw, no, she, she saw that I was doing it. She felt you had to be proud of everything also, you know. But I said it in a very I, nice way. I mean, I have my, I'm sorry, I'm a religious Jew, you know. I, can't, I was, you know, apologetic. I, well, I didn't say, what, you people are not normal. Don't you see a religious Jew is sitting here? You can't, right? I'm going to demand it from the company. There's people that do that. I've seen it. People, I don't think it's nice. <coughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. I know, namely, <coughs> I know, namely, the dove or the finch, she'en o elokus, which is not godliness. Begilui revealed <coughs> the godly soul feels that anything which is not godliness in a revealed way, ain o rotsebo, he does not desire it. O befrad, and especially the davar and a thing, shehu, which is. Neged elokuz against God. Hainu, namely the davar that a thing, she'eno elokuz begiloi that is not revealed godliness. Eno he does not see where we are. Rotsebo. Last word in line is ubifrat. Ubifrat. You have it? Okay. There. Uh, see it, Kobe. You see where it is, Kobe. You have it. Last word in line is ubifrat. It's like one quarter up from the bottom. Godly soul, anything which is not godliness in a revealed way, he does not want it. <coughs> With fraud, and especially the davar, and a thing, shahu, which is menaged, opposing al elokus to God. And he runs from this, keboreach, like one who runs, midavar, from a thing. Hamazik, that is dangerous, that is damaging. It's damaging. You see a, a poisonous uh, spider, a scorpion, or something like that on the floor. Whoa, keep away from it. The same thing, a food that's not exactly kosher, or a movie that's not exactly right, or right, you hear somebody speaking, doesn't exactly, but something is wrong over here. It's not exactly Judaism. You go into a room, you think there's something wrong over here, something's not good. You, you run away from it. You can't stand it. Yeah, get out of here. That is not for me. He runs away from it like a dover amazi, like a thing that's damaging. Like a person that runs away from death. Right? So the church comes and they say, oh, we like your institution. We want to give you a million dollar donation. Right? The million dollar donation from the church. I don't think so. You need the money, don't you? Yeah, but I don't. Everybody is excited. All the other people gave the money. They were excited. I'm not so excited. I'm not so excited. I, I'll ask a rabbi if it's permissible to take it or not permissible. Right? Exactly. Tell me what are your conditions. All you have to do is just put donated by the evangel, the call center. You know what? I'm going to give it to someone else. I'll give it to your competition. Do me a favor. I can live without it. Let them suffer. <coughs> right? There's no, no blessing in this money. I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with it. Get out of here. Right? <coughs> right. Other people would take it, you make a, well, a million. Uh, well, you break it, it's holy, but huh? You, from, uh, if it's if, uh, from idolatry, I, I, I Zora, you're not supposed to take the money. I mean, so it could be, <laughs> it could be you have to go and ask a rabbi. You're going to ask, have to ask somebody who really knows these laws very well, right? It could be that maybe if it doesn't say this money was donated by, it could be maybe you could take the money. Maybe. But it's not so clear. Not so clear. You'd have to really ask, you know, about what it is. There's, there's definite laws. It's not, a, it's not like say a glataka thing. You say, oh sure, a million dollars. Thank you very much, sir. Right? A Jew doesn't keep Shabbos. He gives you the money. There's no problem. But if it gives, comes from the church, and there's a lot of big organizations that do it now. Right? They come. They get, oh, they think they have a picture of a rabbi standing there with one of these guys. There's a big. They make these big checks. Right? Ten thousand dollars too. You have to really watch out. But if it has anything to do with the church, death. It's a little bit of death. It's a, it's, a, it's a death religion. It wants to kill Jews as much as possible. Right? There's nothing good in it. There's nothing good in it. The only good thing in it is, is that it, it keeps those people away from you know, atheism. Atheism is not good. For the Jews, it's death for sure. Right? The Jews, there's nothing, nothing Jewish. And of course, you see that one of their big 
uh, goals of their religion is to make as many Jews leave Judaism as possible. Right? That's the thing. So you see already that it's thick. <coughs> if it was just a thing like, yeah, we have our religion, you have your religion. You know, anybody wants to come to us, go to us. Like, you know, you want to become a Zoroastrian or you want to become something like that, you can do it. But no, their thing is, we have to change them all. We have to destroy Judaism. No Jew are going to do more mitzvahs. And, right? So you see that it's a death. The whole thing is death. They worship a dead Jew. The whole thing is <laughs> the whole religion is death. Right, dead suffering, dead. suffering, and dead, dead, and making as many Jews suffer as possible, spiritually or physically. And you're suffering like a, and that, right, the whole thing. But anyway, if it if it reeks a little bit, something's wrong over it. Right, something is uh, something is, 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 is a, there's a smell of death over here. Right, again, if a person is not connected to Hashem, what does he care? The more zeros, the better. Right, I'm, uh, only a million. Give me ten million. Give me a hundred million. Right, yeah, and you don't even have to give me a million. Give me ten dollars, I'll have it. Right? Main thing is, is yeah, to make money. They still do, and there's there's rabbis at the head of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It still is, but it's a little more secret, maybe. There still is. There's, there's a rabbi that does it. Yeah. They came to my wife. My wife had a big advertising agency. They wanted her to uh, to advertise for them. And they were going to give big money, you know, just and, and they were she wouldn't. She was just advertising. Like, how good they were doing. I told my wife in a million years, if you get a bit, even to save the house, I wouldn't do it. Right? Yeah, Why do you have to do you, you have re, you know, It's, it's hard to understand how evil yeah. the church is. It's, it's hard to understand how evil it is. Because it seems there's something good in it. There's like, see, there's something. You know, they worship God, and it's nice, and there's millions of them, and they, they, it teaches them to be better people, and they're kind, and they're nice, and they're this. <coughs> And all this, you know, they're, 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 they know, our, uh, and they're friendly, and they, they like you, and they help, and they help you, and they and this and that. And in the end, what do they want to do? They want Jews to leave Judaism. That's what it is. They want to destroy Judaism. There won't be one Jew anymore that will put on tefillin. That's their goal. They want no Jews will put on tefillin no, unless they want to. If you want to, you can do it, but you don't have to. Right? That's the end of Judaism. So it says, you run away from it like a thing that, of death. To brewer low that it is clear. La nefesh to the godly soul. The misa ruchnis, that spiritual death, Rahman Ratuan, who kashe yoter is worse. Mimisa gashmis than physical death. Getting burned on the stake, a lot of Jews were willing to get burned on the stake not to change the religion. They were willing to die physically, but not to die spiritually, even for one second. God forbid. But call Chuko so and all of his desire, and his, uh, they say, his desire, his lust, who be is for godliness. And to make Kalim vessels, Lelokus for godliness. Right? Look at the Chabad houses all over the world. Right? Nobody can figure out what makes these guys run. What's going on? What is. They must, they must be in it for something. They, have to, right? they can't figure out what it is. The other groups tried to do it. It just doesn't work. And it works for like a year, for 10 years, something like that. But then afterwards it falls apart. Why? Because if it's not like really a profit-making organization, and if it's really not, and if you don't get your name up in light, you're not going to do it. Right? You move to, nobody's going to make a Chabad, a Chabad house, whatever it is, a Jewish house, an Israeli house, a place what it is, in some little town where there's only 20 Jews. What are you going to do a thing like that for? Right? Make it in Chicago. You have a big place. Make it in you know Baltimore, or something like this. But here you have this. You just may go, and especially to make yourself in danger to go to places where there's no kosher food, there's no mikvahs, there's no nothing. Right? Why would a person want to do that? Just in order just to make Jews be Jewish. What's the what's the value in it? What's the what's the point in it? Right? What's the point? It says the point is that you're doing things for Hashem. That's for God. Go and ask one of these guys. You're going to go to heaven. Heaven, what, what, what is heaven? What does it mean? Heaven? No, I, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven. Right? Chabad and Nixal say we're all going to go to hell, though, because we knew what we should do, what we're supposed to do, and we don't do it. Right? You have a Chabad, you're working all the time, yeah, but you have to learn Hasidus, and you have to love God with all of your heart and all of your might. You're doing that? I, I'm busy. I'm, it's an excuse. So everybody knows. But call gasos and any thickness, humrius, physicality, yeshus, egotism, umsius, and separateness of the Nefesh Elohis, of the Nefesh Bahamis, of the godly soul, 
Ari who mechase, it covers the master and hides. It's called the capital I. The capital I. As soon as you say, I want, I think, I know, I, I, the capital I, this covers over umalim and conceals Allah hergish on the feeling of the godly soul. What about Hashem? Hashem is creating you. Hashem is providing for you. Hashem is giving you your eyes that you're seeing with. He's giving you your mind that you're thinking all these negative thoughts with. Right? He's giving all of you power of pleasure. He's giving you everything. Right? Think a little bit about Hashem. No, I can't do it. Why? Over Peshitos and simply, who is? As the Geshmak, that the pleasure from Velt, the pleasure that you get from the world, right? Watching a good movie, eating a good meal, this pleasure, Olam, the world, which is called He'elem, concealment, is Mechase, is covers, Umastir, and hides, Oif, over, Dem Hergish, the feeling Eloki of Godliness. I'll just do the next two lines, I'll do it fast, and we'll go over it again tomorrow. It says, Zeu, that this is, Heipech HaKavana Mamish, that this is the opposite of God's intention, right? You're just acting natural. You're just having a good time. What's wrong with that? It's the opposite of the intention. Mamish, really, totally the opposite. Mimach HaHoyas HaKavana, what was the intention, the upper intention, God's intention, Babriyas HaOlam. The whole, huh? From what was the intention of God when he created the world. The Nisava Kodesh Baruch Hu, the God, Intended Leos Lo that God wanted that you should make this worldly play this God this world godly. Al by means of your service, The goal is to make this world holy. to be in this world, Davka specifically to purify it and to refine it. but actually what comes out the opposite? That the world itself, instead of you working on the world, the world works on you. It conceals the truth. What is it? There's a story. I want to tell you two short stories. One story is that the Gon of Vilna, the Vilna Gon, we call him, Leo of Vilna, as he was a tremendous genius, a holy person, knew the whole Torah in Kabbalah also, knew everything there was. And he decided that he was going to send 10 men, according to another, there's several minions he sent, to Berlin, that they should learn the ways of the maskilim. The maskilim. I mean, here's 200 years ago, there was the Haskalah. You know, it, it started with Spinoza and these people that man is everything. Your mind is everything. What you can't understand or grasp doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. There's no, huh? But atheist, but with logic, logical atheist. In other words, I, I guess you could call it atheist. Yeah. <coughs> that they knew for sure God doesn't exist. They had all these proofs and all these. So, and, and a lot of them were the intellect. They, they made the main thing is the intellect. You have to well, you use your mind. So they had philosophy and they had art and they had mathematics and they had the science. And they didn't. So, so his idea was he was going to send ten people, or according to another uh, version, he was going to send several groups of ten. They were going to go to Berlin and they were going to learn all of these sciences and things like that, and they would use them for the service of God, right? All of them became non-religious, except for two, two of them, or maybe one and a half. There's a big story about one of them that I don't want to tell. The other one was Moshe Meisler. He was the one that put his hand on Napoleon, Napoleon put his hand on his heart. There's a story about Moshe Meisler. I'll tell you that story afterwards. But Moshe Meisler, somehow or other, he met up with the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe set him free. He was a tremendously gifted person. The altar, he became a chassid of the altar already. But except for that, all of them, they got into the world. The world was so gishmak, so pleasurable, so wonderful, so in intellectual. It appealed to every fiber of their body. The ones who were more intellectual, their intellect. The ones who were more emotional, their emotion. The ones that have desires, the pleasures, everything, everything you want. Right? That was the thing. Anything you want is in this world. Beauty, pleasures, food, everything. Everything you can possibly want. I don't know if that, in those days they had as many drugs it wasn't, they didn't use drugs as much as they use now. That way, drugs wasn't so big, and they certainly didn't have internet. Okay, you know, but it's still, it's, it, don't worry, they had enough things <laughs> to keep a person occupied back then, huh? It was, it was rare. It was rare. It was very rare. It was very rare. People didn't, uh, it was a very, very rare thing. Uh, they would do it once in a while, maybe once in their life or something like that. But they, generally, 
there weren't that many people. It wasn't a common thing like now, like a priest people take cocaine or something. It wasn't there. Really they had. They used to drink. They would drink. They would take other things. There was a, but the, the idea is all these people went, and they all became non-religious. All of them. They all dropped everything because they got a geschmack. All of a sudden, the world gave them a pleasure. Right? They had such a pleasure. The world, they couldn't. And the other story I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah, what happened the, the other stages just completely, they, 